Hey guys, are you using Microsoft Word for your resume or CV? What about Google Docs? Stop. There's a much better tool that lets you create an ATS friendly resume for free. You can easily choose a resume template that companies and recruiters will love. And then you can change any kind of details like page margins, bullet points, and add entire sections easily. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Overleaf to create the most perfect resume. First, you should head to overleaf.com. You can either sign up for free using your email address or even better, if you already have a Google account, all you have to do is sign in to continue. And once you've signed up and you're logged in, let's go ahead and create a resume project. To do this, click on new project and then under it, we want to go with CVs and resumes. From here, you want to click on templates next to filters on the top right. You'll land on a page where you can find a resume template that you might like. But there's actually one that I really want to recommend here if you want to combine simplicity with a super ATS friendly resume format. So from the top of this page, click on show all templates and then look for Jake's resume. And so typically once you find a resume template that you like, you want to click on open as template. But before we jump in, let's go ahead and increase the size of our workspace a little bit. We don't really need the sidebar on the left, so you can just click and drag it towards the left. Notice how the name of the document is based on the template that we're using, but you can easily rename it to something that works for you. Also, don't be scared of some of the content that you start seeing on the left side of the page. This is using something called latex, which is extremely easy to pick up. And there's two ways for you to update the resume. If you want to try modifying the file with the bare minimum options, you can switch to the visual editor and you can see how the content on the left has now been reduced. Let's make a simple change like updating the name at the top. In this case, it should be fairly easy to find. So let's replace it with your name. And to save changes, you can either press control S or just click on the recompile button. You should see the changes reflect immediately. However, let's switch back to the code editor because that's where you can get the full benefits of customizing your resume. For example, what if you realize that you are running out of space, but you want to fit everything on one page? So let's try to fit each section on the resume and take out any white space. All you have to do is find sections formatting in the code editor and then make the vspace smaller. In this case, I reduced this to negative 14 and then saved. You can see how the resume just became super airtight. But since we just started working on this resume, let's undo what we just did to make it look more breathable again. Now, notice how there's a small portfolio section right under our name at the top. What if you wanted to add your website or at least some kind of a link where you've hosted a new project that you've been working on? This should be super easy. Let's go further down and then locate the heading section first. Notice how each of these are separated by a dollar sign pipe dollar sign, except for the last one that's in that list. The only thing that we need to do here is make a copy of that last entry and then of course change the website to what you're trying to add here. After that, use control S to save and recompile the project. And you'll see that the website or link that you added is showing up there. And by the way, if you're having trouble figuring out where each line from the code editor is on the right side, all you have to do is double click the latex command or section and it'll automatically place your cursor exactly on the matching line on the right. But what if you wanted to do the opposite? For example, if I wanted to know where the resume subheading from line 126 was on my PDF, all I'd have to do is double click the command and then click on go to code location in PDF. It'll basically highlight that entire section for you to get full visibility. 
Next, let's try updating the education section. So I'm gonna change Southwestern University to Harvard, as well as this location, which should be Cambridge, Massachusetts. So I'll save again to see the changes, and this one was pretty simple. Next, let's go over a more advanced situation where you need to change a command entirely. And this can be super helpful if you're dealing with the resume template and you wanted to do some formatting changes. So for example, this resume is currently set up where each section on the bottom right is italic. And this includes years under education and city, as well as state under experience. But what if you wanted to make these bold instead of italic? So in this case, we need to make a small change to the resume subheading command. First, you double click the command itself. And if you go further up, we can see exactly where this command is defined for this resume subheading. And this might look a little gibberish, but trust me, it's more simple than it looks. The new command is pretty self-explanatory here because you're telling the editor that you're defining a new one. And resume subheading is simply the name of the command. But the four here is probably the most important part, which is the number of total parameters. The first parameter is written in bold, which as you can see, is the university or company. And the second parameter maps to the locations of your universities and dates of experience. Finally, the third and fourth parameters are both italic because they're using the text IT command. The one we wanna change is the fourth one. So we'll change it from text IT to text BF or bold formatting. And if we use control S to save and recompile now, you'll see that the dates and experience locations are changed to bold. So why is this super important? Because you don't need to do this manually every time you add new sections to your resume. Most importantly, doing this will minimize the chances of you making small mistakes. And that simply makes your resume more ATS compatible. Last but not least, what if you wanted to add an entire section to this resume? For example, at the bottom, we're seeing a bunch of technical skills, but we still have plenty of room left to maybe add some soft skills. And so to do this, all you have to do is copy the section that you want to replicate and then just start making all the changes that you want applied to that section. But whoops, as you can see, there could be cases where you run into errors and that's totally fine because the code editor is typically very clear about what went wrong. As you can see in my case, it's telling me that in line 225, I seem to have missed ending what I started in line 221. And so to fix this, all I have to do is make sure that I add two curly braces to gracefully end that section. And that thankfully made the latex error go away. So once you're done making changes, you can easily save this resume as a PDF by clicking download PDF. And after that, the sky's the limit because you can use that resume and start applying to hundreds of jobs online. And because this resume was ATS friendly, you'll notice that a big benefit is that a lot of fields on your job applications are going to be filled out automatically for you. And this happens as soon as you upload your resume. And if you go back to your projects by clicking home, one thing I do recommend is getting into the practice of making copies of your resume or CV. This way you can keep making minor tweaks to your resume based on the different types of positions that you're actually applying for. So hopefully this helped you find ATS friendly resume templates. And more importantly, a much better way to make resumes or CVs to land an interview for that dream job. Thanks for watching. And for more on ATS friendly resumes or Overleaf, please consider subscribing to this channel.